hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I am going to be sharing my thoughts on All About Evie by Matson Taylor. This is the sequel to The Miseducation of Evie Epworth which I read upon its release two years ago and wholeheartedly adored for its blend of northern humour and very strong northern characters as well as rather well researched prose. Here we are meeting up with Evie again ten years after the events within the first novel. She is now 26 and due to an unfortunate incident involving a Hauntsy pottery mug and Princess Anne, she has now lost her job and is seeking new employment. She is feeling like a lot of mid-twenties folk tend to, and I'm saying this having recently been one, and it's this sense of unsurety in life and this feeling that you're not necessarily achieving all the society goals. She doesn't have a long-term boyfriend, she isn't married with kids, and she feels like these are the things that she ought to have done by now because she's hearing news of friends back home who have done the same. Alongside this we have a parallel storyline involving two characters, Caroline and Digby, from the first book in which we go even further back in time to have scenes that were set in Italy at some points, so that part of me was quite pleased. I think that this is an incredibly strong sequel to The Miseducation of Evie Epworth. There is this sense of maturity, not just in the character's voice, but from the writing as well. One of the things that I liked within the first book is the number of jokes that Taylor would put within the prose and it's very much something that he has talked about within interviews, the musicality of language, the rhythm of language, and it definitely it comes to the fore in both Evie Epworth and All About Evie. However, here I feel like Taylor has pared back more to allow more of the story to shine through and was particularly thrilled to see that. I think that it also means that those comedic moments are even stronger. I will admit that this first scene that I'd kept hearing people talk about, I had not expected to find as humorous as I did. As soon as I'd heard about it, I saw it coming uh, when I first saw these things mentioned. I saw what was going to happen coming and then it happened and I put the book down and I just sat there shocked that it happened hysterical with laughter and even when I was taking Sally out for a walk later on that day I ended up having that scene come back into my mind and just walking around the forest laughing because I just found this image that was stuck in my mind so thoroughly funny. And that could be said for a lot of scenes in this book. There is a lot of, weirdly, there's a lot of vis visual humour within the text and certain images are written in such a way that if when I was imagining them on the like if they were ever to be on the screen I was just laughing and I thought it was great it was great to have this sense of humour I love a bit of visual comedy yes syntactical comedy is probably some of my favourite but the visual comedy that Taylor uses in here um, with certain actions performed by certain characters, certain mishaps happening, was thoroughly enjoyable and perfect for the story that Taylor was telling. It's almost a different kind of comedy as well. When I read The Miseducation of Evie Epworth, it felt more like this, uh, something that I could imagine seeing televised, maybe as a short series involving Evie Epworth, um, almost like, it, well, it reminded me of Dinner Ladies in the Style and Last of the Summer Wine and these big northern comedies. Whereas this book seems more cinematic and of the time, and the tone and the style kept reminding me of The Lovers starring Richard Beckinsale and Paula Wilcox, even and also due to a plot that was going on in the background of this, which was quite funny to me uh, because it mirrored a plot point from The Miseducation of Evie Epworth, but put a twist on it that wasn't in that first book and seemed just like an Evie thing to do. One thing I also liked about All About Evie is the new characters that we have introduced. So firstly I want to talk about Griffin, who is somewhat of an antagonist within the text, and Griffin reminded me 
uh, of a few people. Firstly, she reminded me of co-workers that I have had in the past where you could do absolutely nothing right in their eyes and no matter what they were always trying to catch you out because they were certain well they just didn't like you and Griffin encapsulated that we have seen we all know a Griffin I know a Griffin but Griffin was also paired with something else she is a literary gatekeeper and I have met them before they are part of the art community that I do not get on with um, there are certain types like Griffin who believe that they're always reinventing the wheel and that writing has to be a certain type of way and that they aren't writing for certain people and mocks Evie and Evie's aspirations and sees Evie as nothing more than a ignorant northerner. I've met a lot of people like Griffin and every single scene that she was in, she irritated me. She got under my skin. I was, like, I read this book in a day. I'll say that. I wanted to. I had been waiting for this book for the longest time and I was thrilled when I finally managed to get my hands on a copy. Another character that we have is Genevieve, who is actually Genevieve, but she's decided to reinvent herself and she wants to be this fashion designer. And some of the visual comedy that we have within this book comes from this character, who is very similar to Evie in the first book and I think has almost serves as a reminder not just for Evie but for the reader as to where Evie has come from and I liked this idea of two young northern women working together both to further their lot in life and I just I really adored the way that Taylor wrote these relationships with one another and the way that they all interconnected and sometimes I think that I, I, I was just in awe of the way in which the author managed to have this larger cast of characters but they are individuals with heart and who all served to tell a rather brilliant, humorous story. <sighs> Another thing that I liked about this book is the references and the things that Taylor brings up within the writing. I, in particular, am talking, well, firstly, the Hauntsy Pottery Mug. Hauntsy is something that we've had in the charity shop for years, and in my time, I've seen go from a bestseller to it don't really sell that well. And it's all the references. What I've talked about in the past and I've talked about in relation to other books is certain writers, when they're writing about what is now a historical period, even just going back to the 90s, they will throw down a load of references that any reader will remember, but they might not be suitable for the character. What Taylor has done here is that he has gone through and he's found stuff and stuff that relates to Evie and the references that come up feel suitable for the characters but also they are dotted around to colour the prose. They aren't just thrown in there um, slapdash in order to, for people to think oh yes I can tell exactly what period of time this is. You can see that the author has done the research but the author has also taken the time to make sure that the research done actually suits the character that he is discussing at the time. I also like it because um, I've seen the author talk about how he read old magazines um, from the time and it always brings me back to when I was writing the first Doris book and I needed to make sure something had happened and I was going through like what Laura Ashley sold at certain points within the 60s and the 50s and 60s to make sure that Doris could have actually had this thing that I said she'd got in the 50s and 60s, otherwise I'd have to have changed it. It's just a marvellous, humorous read uh, that features characters that are exceptionally full of heart. It touches on some very serious topics and the way in which they are dealt feels somewhat heartening. It never feels gratuitously done or just shoved in there. Everything has this flow and the characters are all on journeys seeking something and we are just getting this snapshot of their lives. 
And as I say, if Evie Epworth was a short northern comedy, then its sequel feels very much more mature, very much could be turned into almost a romantic comedy of, well, it could be a series, it could be a film, I wouldn't mind, I'd watch it. I, I, I don't say that every book needs to, I'm just saying that this book is incredibly visual and so much of it, so many of the images within this book lingered in my mind after the reading of it and the characters and certain things that happened to Evie when she was stuck in the flat on her own and she was supposed to be somewhere else but she might have been trapped in some sort of garment were quite hilarious to me. And them's my thoughts. If you've read All About Evie by Mattson Taylor and would like to discuss it then please feel free to do so in the comments. Do you think that this is something that you would like to read after watching me discuss this book? Do let me know. I hope that you have enjoyed this video because until next time, that is all.